This is my continuation review of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now, why does a movie like 2001 A Space Odyssey still hold up to this day? One reason could be that it has been called one of the three or four most influential films. Also, um, sci-fi movies made after 2001, Star Wars trilogy, Aliens trilogy, James Cameron movies, take 2001 away, there wouldn't be Star Wars trilogy, Aliens trilogy, James Cameron movies, um, 2001 basically started, started it all. Also, if Stanley Kubrick made 2001 um, in present day, would he use the resources of modern technology that he didn't have access to back during its filming? He would probably use the same resources then to use now. Two thousand one is a movie made in about four parts. The first part being the Dawn of Man, um, the primate's discovery of Tool using a bone to abuse an already wounded primate discovering the black monolith, a black rectangular um, set piece that they see in the middle of nowhere not knowing what to um, make of this um, amazing set piece that Kubrick uses again and again throughout the movie. The second part of the movie being the um, lecture mission of Dr. Haywood Floyd. Haywood Floyd gives a lecture and also travels with some other crew members to a planet to find discover the black monolith, photographing it. Shortly after that, there is the Jupiter mission of um, Dave Bowman and Frank Poole, astronauts traveling with um, other astronauts that are in hibernation mode inside a spaceship, a spacecraft that this uh, set piece has been um, said to have been bigger than the size of a house. Rotating spaceship, spherical, uh, uh, circular spaceship, rotating 360 degrees. The enemy of the movie 2001, HAL 9000, a um, internal um, microcosmic um, um, computer that performs two criminal acts, the first one being uh, cutting off Pool's life support. Also, uh, he will not allow Bowman to re-enter the main spacecraft but with Bowman only uh, using a space pod to inject himself, <laughs> forcing Bowman to uh, thrust himself from the space pod into the main spacecraft. 
all by his own doing without the assistance of HAL 9000. HAL 9000, the computer, is he's symbolic of probably the black monolith. If you look at HAL 9000, the, um, from the outside instrument of HAL 9000, a little red dot within a black circle, within a black rectangle that is an instrument of a dashboard on the uh, spacecraft dashboard that looks so harmless from Bowman and Poole's perspective and the viewer's perspective. The fourth part of the movie being, um, I believe it's titled Jupiter in the Infinite, where Bowman is traveling through the amazing Stargate sequence, probably my favorite part of the movie. Bowman is traveling through the Stargate sequence through a massive um, sequences of light and um, from world to world ending up in a um, historic uh, bedroom where he sees himself in accelerated age and soon his accelerated age self is on a deathbed where you see himself on a, on a bed, the black monolith, and the star child. So, Stanley Kubrick, he doesn't photograph the reality. He photographs the photograph of reality, and he's also amazing with composition. Look, looking at a um, scene in 2001, almost any given scene, it is so detailed with visuals and um, almost every conceivable detail of each scene, slow scenes, moving made very slowly, moving very slowly, almost, yeah, no dialogue, not almost no dialogue, no dialogue, until the first 20 or so minutes. And it's practically a silent movie made during a time of um, talking pictures. And it's science fiction. So I hope that this review provides some further insight into 2001. Thanks for watching.